Hello everyone. We are going to look at sequences and series. A sequence is a set of things, it could be numbers or shapes, that follow each other in a particular pattern. One thing that I enjoyed was just kind of like number puzzles and shape puzzles when, whenever I was younger. And some people, they're gifted with it. They can see patterns in nature. And that's one thing about math. Math is a way to explain abstract in thought and in, in, in vision of, of patterns that some people can't truly see. But we can use math to be, to be able to explain those patterns. And patterns are all about us. And it helps us to give us a clue that something's there. So what I have written down here, I have just two basic patterns. So you need to pause the video and see if you can determine the values that go in these blanks to complete the pattern that we see. Okay, so for the first one, what's it increasing by each time? Yes, it's increasing by 5 each time. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. My pattern each time is plus 5. And the pattern over here may be a little bit more tricky. It's just a list of numbers, but these numbers are your perfect squares. This is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared. And there are patterns through there. Well, the the thing about sequences and series is it's really it's it's a an equation that's given that illustrates a pattern that is occurring. And you have two types of sequences, infinite and finite. Infinite means they go on forever. From 1 all the way through. Finite sequences means that they go from 1 to some number n. And we'll use n as our notation through here. And again, if you notice, for infinite we talk about the domain. And in a way, domain and range are interchangeable. What I'm talking about here is a range of numbers, but for what we're looking at, and, and even looking at this being a function, for instance down here that is a function we're talking about the domain then n is like in lieu of x so a function having for its domain the set of positive integers 1 through whatever this means these are our inputs this is what we're going to put into the function that we're given for whatever sequence or series and then for finite it's the same principle except we're going to have a place where we stop Again, it will be the domain that we're speaking of. So these are our inputs, what we're plugging in. So that doesn't mean that what I get out is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up. These are our inputs, what we're plugging in. So let's take a look at that. We have an example, and here is our basic equation, A of N. And I... I I'm not used to writing it that way. I'm used to having it as a sub n. Both of these ways are correct. Notice our function is still the same. 2 to the n minus 1. 2 to the n minus 1. It's just a way to have your nomenclature. I use this. I use a sub n. And what I do is I begin with 1. So just like up here. And for this one, we're just we're acting like it is an infinite series. I could keep going all the way through to a sub n if I made it finite. But I start with 1, then I do 2, and then I do 3. And it is, it is simple, especially if you stop and you look at it. What I'm saying is, for this, I'm saying n equals 1. So I plug in the value of 1 everywhere there is an n, and then I just solve. So 2 to the 1 minus 1 is the same as 2 to the 0 power, which equals 1. So whenever n is 1, a sub n equals 1, or a sub 1 equals 1. Whenever n equals 2, so that means everywhere there's an n, I'm going to plug in a 2. 
2 and 2. So a sub 2 equals 2 to the 2 minus 1, which is simply 2 to the first power, which equals 2. And then I let n equal 3. So everywhere there's an n, I write the number 3. So a sub 3 equals 2 to the 3 minus 1, which equals 2 squared, which equals 4. And these right here, we call them the terms of the sequence. Those are the terms of the sequence. And a to the n is known as the general term. So I have a problem for you right here. Find the first four terms of a sub n equals a negative 1 to the nth power times n squared. Pause the video and let's see if we end up with the same answer after you work it. Alright, so let's take a look. First thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to color code it just for time. I'm going to say let n equal 1. So that's a to the first equals a negative 1 to the first times 1 squared. And what that turns out to be, anything to the first power is itself. So a negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1. So now a sub 2. It means I take 2 and I put it everywhere there is uh, an n. So what I have is a negative 1 squared times Two squared. Let me put that out there. Sorry. Now, you notice everywhere I said, and I I'll, I need to write that over to the side. Make sure that you are tracking. This was in sub one. This is where I'm getting these. Remember? Okay. We start with one. These are my inputs. So one, two. Next one will be three. And I'm only going to do four. A sub 2, A sub n, see that I replaced the n with the 2, <coughs> equals a negative 1 squared. Well, how I got the squared was I replaced the n with the 2 times uh, 2 squared. Well, there's n squared. I replaced the n with the 2. So I have a negative 1 times a negative 1, which is 1, times uh, 2 squared, which is 4, and that gives me 4. So now I say, okay, let n equal 3. So a to the third equals a negative 1, or a sub 3 equals a negative 1 to the third times 3 squared. And usually it takes like three or four of these and then you start to discern the pattern of what you're going to have. Well this is going to be a negative 1 times 9, so a negative 9. Well it's, it's what this pattern, what this formula has me doing is it's going to end up having me doing the, the perfect squares except the sign is going to flip between each one. Let's see if that's what happens. Into the fourth. So that means a sub 4 equals a negative 1 to the fourth. Well, a negative number to an even power is going to be a positive number. And that is going to be 4 squared. So I end up with 16. So what I see here is that any odd number that I plug in and I'm going to have a perfect square for that, but it's going to be negative. And every even number that I plug into the formula is going to give me a perfect square that's going to be positive. And that is an example of, for this one, it was actually a finite sequence because I went through the first four terms. And that was it. Okay, guys, that was in more or less an introduction to sequences. Please critically think and structure your homework. Watch the publisher's videos and good luck with the rest of your homework.